Files are tools with teeth very like wide versions of the teeth on your jeweler's saw blades. As you push the file forward, each tooth slices away a very small amount of metal, allowing you to reshape and retexture your metal after cutting it. So I just cut this, and you can see that my line's wiggling around here. You know, I've got a nice clean sharpie line with smooth curves, but I've cut too far out here and made like a little kink in the line, and through here it flattens out, and along here it starts to wibble and wobble and ripple, and then through here it flattens out again instead of this all being a nice smooth continuous curve. And over here, where I've tried to cut a straight line, again it's wiggling all over the place and sort of broke off here, and I don't have a nice clean straight line with the saw. And that's not unusual. As you get better with the saw, you'll be able to follow your lines a lot more cleanly, um, and you'll be able to saw closer to line. Your straight lines will be straighter, your curved lines will be smoother. But especially when you're a beginner, this is not unusual to have this much wiggle and wobble. And that's why we file, right? We're gonna file not only to get rid of the texture from the saw on the edge, but we're gonna use the, the files to refine our shape. And that's what we're gonna file for first, is to refine the shape, and then we'll lighten up and file the texture. Like most of the tools we use, files have been evolving for centuries, so there are many different terms to learn in order for us to have a common language to talk about them. So take a moment here and learn the six items in the image. The cut of a file refers to the pattern and size of its teeth. Like saw blades, bigger teeth take bigger bites. These teeth are usually cut at an angle across the file's surface, and if there's just one set of cuts, like in the image on the left, it's called single cut. If it has a second set of cuts at the opposite angle, like the one on the right, it's called double cut or cross cut. Single cut files leave smoother edges behind but clog more easily. Double cuts break the chips they remove in smaller bits and stay cleaner but leave more texture behind. Double cut files are much more common. Like seemingly everything else in tools, there are competing systems used to describe them as seen above. In the jewelry world, the Swiss pattern is more common than the American pattern. In the Swiss pattern, as the number gets larger, so do the teeth. I usually buy number two cut Swiss pattern files for the shop, but I keep a set of zeros, fours, and sixes on my own bench as well, because filing is far more efficient than sanding, and you can save a lot of time by having a set of finer files. The cut is stamped on the tang or heel. Several of your files, such as the barrette, have what are called safe edges, which don't have any teeth at all. These are good for when you need to file into a corner or very close to another edge that you don't want to file by accident, such as the V-notch on your exercise. You have 12 files in your toolkit, six hand files with file lengths of six inches or more and six needle files with file lengths of less than four inches. In the hand files, you have a barrette tapered in width and thickness coming to a point. Only the flat side is cut, providing a safe edge and top. You have a hand or flat, which is parallel in width and tapered in thickness. It's double cut on top and bottom, and one edge is single cut at the other edge as a safe edge. You have a ring file, which is tapered in width and thickness coming to a point. It's narrower than regular half round and useful for filing inside of rings. It's double cut on both sides. You have a half round, tapered in width and thickness coming to a point, double cut on both sides. You have a square file, which is a general purpose file, cut and usable all the way to the point gradually tapered, double cut on all four sides. You have a round or rat tail file. These are gradually tapered and workable to the point, used where it's necessary to enlarge a hole or round off a radius. They're double cut. In your needle files, you have a barrette, an equaling, which is the same as the flat file in your hand files, only instead of it tapering, through its thickness, it stays parallel. 
You have a half round. A round or rat tail file. A square. And one that's called a three square, which is triangular in cross section. File handles give you better leverage and protect your hand from the file's tangs, which are roughly cut even on expensive Swiss files. The blue plastic handles come in two sizes and screw onto the tangs of your barrette, flat, ring, and half round files. The wooden handles fit the square and rat tail files. The tangs simply jam into the hole. Giving them a knock against the table will help set them. The teeth of your files will become clogged with chips. Use the wire side of your file brush to clean them out. Lay the file against the tabletop or bench pin and brush the file at the same angle the teeth are cut at. Don't brush at the opposite angle from the teeth or you'll be filing the brush instead of brushing the file. The ring clamp is a simple clamping tool that's tightened by forcing a wedge into the opposite end. These are used to hold small work pieces while filing or sanding to give you better leverage and control. To use them, twist the wedge out, place your piece into whichever end fits it the best, close the jaws as close to the area you'll be working on as possible, and push the wedge into the opposite end as far as it will go. Give the end of the wedge a tap on the tabletop to tighten it up. Your first goal in filing is to smooth your sawn edges until they conform to your drawn lines. No one's control with the saw is perfect. Inevitably, your edges will have high spots that need to be worn down and flat spots that need to be deepened and wiggles that need to be straightened out. None of this will happen if you use a file that's so small that it follows the irregularities instead of wearing them down. Use the biggest file that will fit the shape you're trying to make. In other words, pick the file that is already the shape that you want your edge to be. Not only will this keep it from following the wanderings of your saw, it'll remove metal more efficiently. So I'm gonna file down this high spot here first. So that it's closer to the same height as the rest of my ripples. Once that's knocked down, I'll start running the file over that whole length with each stroke. And I'm looking at the texture that I've got that I've got on that edge and any little breaks in the texture like that nick right there tells me that I'm not done filing yet. And I can look at the glare, the shine on that edge. When that glare lights up that whole edge all at once, I know that that line's straight. And I can get that line straight by using that nice flat surface on the file so that the whole thing is in contact the whole time. Okay. So now that line is perfectly straight. You could even check it against a straight edge and you'd see that it was perfectly straight because we're using the large flat surface of the file as if it was a straight edge. On the side that was away from the direction you were filing, you're going to get a very sharp edge called a burr. Get rid of that and lay it down flat. Lay your file almost flat against the surface and then just one stroke or a few strokes will get rid of that burr without beveling the edge. So to do the curved edges, I'm going to use a half round file either a hand file or half round needle files, depending on the sizes of the edges. And I'm gonna to check to make sure that the file that I'm choosing can actually create the curves that I'm hoping for from that line. All right. And 
first few strokes, whenever I'm finally in first few strokes, I'm bearing down fairly, fairly hard, and I'm trying to reshape that edge to more closely resemble my curve of the, the line that I've drawn. Right, and I'm checking it against the line that I've drawn, but I'm also looking at the texture of that edge. And if there's little nicks still in that texture, I know that I've got a spot there that the file hasn't gotten to. So it probably hasn't taken on the curve of that file yet. Right. If you've got any flattened, parts of a curve. You may have to focus in that spot a little bit, sort of dig it in a little deeper, and then feather it out so you don't end up having a, a low spot. For outside curves, I'm just going to flip the file over because it's more stable to use the flat side of the file on that outside curve. Right, like I have this high spot on that little curve at the end. I can focus in on that. Take him down, sort of round him off, and then feather it out. All right, and then once everything is a little closer to what I wanted from that line, I can run those curves together, sort of blend them together. If you're having a hard time controlling the file, if it keeps wanting to slide off, use your other fingers to help control where that file can go. All right, so I've got a little ways to go here but it's a lot closer to what the line was. I've taken the burrs off real quick. All right, and then checking it against that line again. So, to do the curved edges, use whatever curve file fits that edge the best. I'm still going to hold it against the side of the bench pin like I was doing before. And I'm going to push forward. And I'm going to roll my hand as I push forward so that the shape of that file follows the shape of that curve. If I don't roll my hand, I'll dig in the edge conform and then dig in the edge on the other side. So you always want to roll your hand as you push forward. Okay. Also pushing forward parallel to the floor. I'm not angling the file and I'm not rounding that edge as I go. I'm just pushing straight forward and across. Okay. When you do an outside curve, it's the same kind of idea. You're going to roll your hand as you go across. And I'm using the flat side of the half round for this. It's easier to control. to choke up on the files. And, and use whatever size fits that size of curve the best. Sometimes it's the tip of one of your hand files instead of the knee file. Right. 
afraid to use your fingers of your left hand to control where the file can go because the file won't be able to file your fingertips. Also use the ring clamp. Hold on to the metal and stabilize it better. And you can use your fingers to control where that file can go to give yourself more control. tight spots without getting stuck. I'm going to work from the corner out. That's also going to help you keep from getting stuck. And the more you angle the file in line with the metal, Straight of the line it will cut. Further, turn the file outward and you can get all the way up into that corner.
forward and across. So you're filing that full edge with every stroke. You don't have to lift up the file when you pull back, but you want to lighten up on the pressure. And if it's screeching like that, you go ahead and pick it up when you drag it backwards. That whole line lights up all at once when it's straight. 